Hey, you guys, it's GED question of the daytime, and we are facing another word problem. Let's take a look. A bowling league charges a monthly membership fee of $25 that allows its members to pay only 79 cents per game. If Lurleen can spend no more than $50 each month on the fee and games, how many games can she play each month? Okay. So whenever you're looking at a word problem, make sure you know where you're starting, the information you've been given, and where you're going, uh, the information you want to find. So let's take a look. I'm going to start with where I'm going because that helps me to plan out my whole life. So uh, the question here that they asked me is how many games can she each play each month? So uh, that's where I'm going. I want to know the number of games each month. Find the number of games that this woman's going to play in a month. Okay. Now, what information do I know? What have I been given? Well, I know that every month she's going to have to pay this fee of 25 bucks. That's her membership fee. And if she doesn't pay that, she doesn't get to play at all. So probably <laughs> we're going to need to deal with this. Um... And let's see, and then that allows the members to pay only 79 cents per game, 79 cents per game. So I know how much each game costs. If Lurleen can spend no more than $50 each month on the fee and games. So I have this $50. What is this $50? This is the money she has to spend. I'm going to go so far as to call it the total money that this woman has to spend each month. Great. So I've been given the total money that she um, has to spend for the month, and I have two ways she's going to spend it. She's going to spend it on a monthly membership fee, and she's going to spend it on the per game fee. Well, I think the very first thing we're going to need to do is pay for that monthly membership fee, because without paying for that, um, we can't play any games for, at this price. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to take from my 50 bucks, I'm going to pay out 25 Mathematically, if you're paying out 25, you're going to take that away. You're going to subtract it. Okay, so 50 minus 25, uh, 10 minus 5 is 5, 4 minus 2. I have another 25 bucks left to spend. Okay, so after she pays her membership fee, um, she's got 25 bucks left to spend. Okay, but that's not what I was looking for. I'm not looking for how much money she has left after she pays her membership fee. I'm looking for the number of games she's going to play this month. So um, let's take this $25. We need to still keep working with it. Let's see. It costs her $0.79 cents per game. Notice that idea of per game. That means every single game she plays is going to cost her $0.79. Cents. Like the first game will cost her $0.79. Cents. The second game will cost her $0.79. Cents. The third game will cost her $0.79. Cents. And she can keep using up one $0.79 cent game at a time until she uses her entire $25. Mathematically, what am I doing here? Well, I'm taking $25 and I'm breaking it evenly into groups of $0.79. Cents. I'm dividing. I'm taking $25 and I'm dividing it up into groups of 79 cents because each game cost me 79 cents. So I got to the end of math I like to do in my head. I don't like dealing with decimals in my head if I don't have to. So I'm going to do this in my TI-30 excess calculator. 25 divided by 79 cents. Don't forget the, um, oh, I just did it wrong. Even mathematicians do things wrong. Let me try again. 25 divided by 79 cents. Um, what I was telling you is don't forget the decimal place. Because if you don't write the decimal place, some students don't, then you're charging her $79 each game. So keep that little decimal point so it's really $0.79. Cents. And I get this number. I get this number 31.6455. And it goes on and on for a really long time. Now, you must ask yourself in a word problem... When you get a decimal answer, can a decimal work here? Can I have pieces and parts of numbers? Does it make sense? Does my answer make sense? So in order to determine that, I'm going to ask you, this is 31 what? Well, I had $25, and I broke it up that it was um, 79 cents a game. And so what I'm looking at here is I'm looking at 31.645555 
games. This is how many games she could play. The first game would cost her 79 cents, the second one, the third, the fourth, and so on and so forth until I use up that 79 cents. So this is 31.6 games. So I want you to think about this. If I go to the bowling alley and I say I have enough money for 31.6 games, what are they going to tell you at the bowling alley? Are they going to tell you, sure, just round up and, and let's make it 32 games? Or are they going to tell you, no, you can only play 31 games, come back when you have the rest of the money? Well, you and I live in the real world. I don't care how many times your math teacher taught you to round up. In the real world, if you only have part of the money, you're not getting uh, the thing that you want. Um, unless you find a coupon. I do love a coupon. But you know what I mean here. They're going to say, yeah, come back when you have the rest of the money. And so I'm going to have to round down in this problem because I'm restricted by what happens in the real world. And in the real world, they don't give you pieces and parts of bowling games. Um, you can only go up to the nearest whole number of bowling games. Okay, so really, she's going to be able to play 31 games in a month. As one of my students say, said, one per day. Lucky Lurleen. Okay, awesome. If you have any questions about this, be sure to drop them in the comments.